Good morning, class. We are looking at section 3.11, <clears throat> hyperbolic functions. So let's quickly recap what we covered and then we take it from there. So as always, we have a lot of differentiation formulas class. Okay. And you got to be comfortable with especially because of the reverse process coming up, the uh, anti-differentiation <clears throat> or integration is called. The linear approximation was discussed, hyperbolic functions, okay, and their definition. Uh, definitions that everybody, I believe, remembers, cosh x is e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x divided by two, and cinch is e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x over two. Then we have some definitions such as uh, hyperbolic tangent is cinch over cosh uh, and so on and so forth. So with that, we have uh, a lot of um, identities that are similar to uh, trigonometric identities. As an example, cinch negative x is minus cinch x because if you recall, sine x was an odd function, just as an example. Uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. That's from trigonometry over here, cosh squared minus cinch squared equals one. Similar to a certain degree. And then we looked at the graphs. The graph comes from the fact that you are combining e to the power of x and e to the power of minus x, okay? And then we looked at some proofs just the way we did in trigonometry. Okay, for example, the proof of cosh squared minus cinch squared equals one uses the definition of cosh and cinch and results in the answer. Uh, we look at more proofs. Okay, we continue with more examples as we did in trigonometry. Okay. Uh, trigonometric function value would be given and the rest of it you could uh, come up with the same thing for a hyperbolic uh, function can be given and the rest you can come up with. And uh, finally, we looked at this example where we did the differentiation and the differentiation results in using uh, the combination of chain rule with, uh, you know, uh, hyperbolic functions. So let's look at uh, new stuff now. Okay, class. So uh, this was the last one that was covered, I believe. And uh, this last question was uh, pretty interesting and it got a little bit involved. In any event, I hope everybody remembers that. Everybody has gone over that. So it should make perfect sense. So just a quick recap on this last one, okay? You are looking at the product of a hyperbolic cosecant and one minus natural log of that, okay? So you use the product rule. The derivative of uh, hyperbolic cosecant is put here and then the parentheses. Then the derivative of the parentheses, okay, because it's a natural ne negative sign remains, because the natural log, you flip it over, you times the derivative of that. And then by the product rule times the first piece, then it's a matter of, uh, simplification. All right, and we ended up with this answer. Now, let's look at, as we have trigonometric functions and their inverse functions, we have hyperbolic functions and their inverse functions. The cinch and, um, you know, a hyperbolic tangent are uh, one to one. So they have inverse, denoted by cinch inverse and hyperbolic tan inverse. The cosh is not uh, because if you recall, the cosh looked almost like y equals x squared, shifted up by one unit as far as the rough sketch. So you have it in your mind, which is not one to one, and restriction makes it one to one, and this is the restriction that is given. Okay. So the bottom line is trigonometric functions were not one to one, and we made it so by restriction. Uh, in this case, we can do the same thing. So. Uh, when we look at uh, cinch and the inverse function, okay, there is no restriction for cosh. Uh, if you look at the cosh, we do the restriction, okay, 
and uh, therefore uh, the inverse becomes uh, available because it has to be one to one and you can look at the rest of them as well okay um, so these are uh, various functions okay involving hyperbolic functions and their inverse functions okay um, now inverse hyperbolic functions okay hyperbolic functions are defined in terms of exponential functions their inverse can be expressed in terms of what logarithmic functions the hyperbolic functions are differentiable so are the inverse hyperbolic functions so um if you look at sinh inverse x is natural log of x plus square root of x squared plus one and the rest of it if you look at their derivatives are given now of course we will look at the proof class and i look at the proof and maybe you want to try to do one on your own but just to give you an idea okay the uh, sinh was e to the power of x okay minus e to the power of minus x over two now it's an exponential function but the inverse now is a logarithmic natural law <clears throat> so it does make sense because they are inverse of each other so they use their inverse function accordingly so hyperbolics use exponential and inverse hyperbolic use log how does that happen we'll see in a moment uh, also they have um, you can come up with the derivatives we will discuss that also but as an example if you recall the uh, derivative of sine inverse was one over square root of one minus x squared so the derivative of sinh inverse would be one over one plus x squared or x squared plus one so what is my point my point is they're extremely close okay and uh, uh, cosh okay cosine inverse was the same thing but it was a uh, had a negative at top in this case this is not how it works one over square root of x squared minus one so there are similarities and there are differences there's no questions about that so what i want to do the first thing is i want to go over the definition and see why is that a natural log and can we show that and if we can show for one we can show for all so let's look at one of them as an example so let's show that sinh inverse is a natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus one. So let's see how we do that. We start, of course, and we remember all these definitions, okay, class. So start, we start with uh, letting y be sinh inverse of x and using the definition of the inverse, then sinh y becomes x, okay, sinh y becomes x. Okay, so this is by definition of inverse functions. Now, sinh y, everybody, we look at this one. Here's the definition of sinh x. So over here, we are going to replace the x with y. So that means e to the power of y minus e to the power of minus y equals two. So what are we doing? We are using the definition. Okay, now what do we do? Cross product, I hope everybody can see that we can think of this over one, this times this, this times that. So uh, that is a cross product, everybody. So you have e to the power of y minus e to the power of minus y times one, and then equals two x. Now, what we wanna do, uh, we are going to bring everything to the same side. So we are going to move the two x. So that's the first thing we arrive at. We move the two x and here's what we have. And remember what we want to uh, solve for, eventually y is sinh inverse and we are going to solve for y. Remember that we are looking for y. To do that, how do we solve this equation for y? Let us multiply both sides by e to the power of y. Because we don't like this one, we want to get rid of it. So when you multiply this one, it becomes e to the power of 2y or e to the power of y squared. This becomes minus 2x e to the power of y minus this one becomes one. I hope you see that when you multiply by e to the power of y, e to the power of y by e to the power of negative y results in one. Don't forget the sign. Now, we treat this 
as a quadratic equation, quadratic with respect to e to the power of y. In fact, uh, I'm going to rewrite it in this format. And if you have a hard time dealing with it just the way it is, you can let e to the power of y be, let's say, z. And therefore, you have z squared minus 2xz minus 1 equal to 0. And you use the quadratic formula. Everybody remembers the quadratic formula class, right? OK, minus b. OK, let's discuss that. OK, so if you go with this, z becomes minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, OK? Knowing now what is a and what is b. So let's just use a different color. I hope everybody is comfortable with this. Or with this, it doesn't matter. Knowing that a equals 1, OK, everybody? b equals minus 2x, and c equals negative 1. So we put it into a quadratic formula. OK. So what do we get? Minus b, that means minus minus 2x or 2x, plus minus. b squared minus 2x, when you squared, you get positive 4x squared. OK. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, you get this one. So this is elementary algebra, believe it or not. OK. Now, I hope you realize you can take out the factor of 4 from in here, from if you, uh, let's just write it here. So class, we can say under the radical, we have a 4 that comes out as a 2. So the top and the bottom, they have a common factor of 2. We drop them. I hope everybody is following that. I hope everybody is OK with that. And so we end up with e to the power of y being this. OK? So uh, the question is, y is the positive only. I hope you realize why. This has two answers, plus and minus. We keep the plus only. Why not minus? I hope you realize that this expression, square root of x squared plus 1, is larger than x. So if you go with the negative, this whole thing becomes negative. e to the power of y cannot be negative, OK? So y plus only, this is the reason, understanding the domain and range of exponential functions, OK? So this is e to the power of y. So how do I get to y? I take a natural log of both sides. So if I take the natural log of both sides, that's the end of the proof. So I hope everybody is comfortable with that. OK, now this is really involved because it is um, the higher you know, uh, um, echelon of, if you will, um, algebra when you do the quadratic uh, uh, equation formula, you should be really having a decent understanding as to what is A, what is B, what is C. This is a page I would go over it uh, at least one more time to be on the safe side, OK? All right. Now, let's take a look at differentiation. When we proved uh, the derivative of uh, inverse trigonometric functions, we did the same thing here, meaning what is the derivative of sinh inverse x? We let it be y, and we use the fact by definition, sinh y equals x. We did the same thing for sine inverse, or cosine inverse, or tan inverse, something like that that we did. So we want to prove the answer is 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. And after we are done, I highly recommend you do another one on your own. OK. Now, how do we do that? We use implicit differentiation. Sinh y, the derivative of sinh is cosh, OK? 
so cosh y, and the derivative of y is y prime or dy dx, and x gives you one. So I hope you remember we did exactly the same thing with the trigonometric functions. So what is dy dx? One over cosh y. And you're practically done. All you have to do, figure out what's cosh, and you remember that cosh squared minus sinh squared equals one. Remember, cosh squared minus sinh squared equals one. Okay. So what is cosh? You take this one to the other side and you take a root. Okay. So cosh y is equal to the square root of one plus sinh squared. So sinh squared y. So what is sinh? Replace it with x. Okay, everybody. This is the proof. Again, I highly recommend you go over the proof of trigonometric, inverse trigonometric functions we did and see if you can uh, follow that. And we do the same thing here. Okay. Let's look at a couple of simple examples, okay, to get us uh, going with this uh, differentiation. We are interested in finding uh, the sinh inverse of x squared. Uh, please understand, class, that uh, we are going to use uh, the chain rule. So if by any chance, just as an example, and I want, I want to write one of them, if instead of x class, okay, uh, let's say we have, okay, d dx, okay, of sinh inverse of u, okay? Then it becomes du over the square root of u squared plus one, where u by definition is, I don't know, g of x, f of x, whatever you want to call it, okay? So I didn't write the uh, general format, but I'm hoping by now we realize that it is used, therefore, if we want to look at this guy, we say, okay, this is our function, g of x or u. So when we go with this formula one over, instead of x, we're going to put x squared and square it. And then we need du, we need 2x. So when we square that one, becomes x to the power of four. And then when we write this one times 2x, all we have to do, rewrite this as following, and we are done, everybody. Okay. So I hope everybody is clear as to how we arrive at the answer. Very simple. Bear in mind, this is a function of x. Here's another example. We want to get, again, uh, the, the derivative of sinh inverse. Doesn't matter what this is. So what is this? This is g of x or u. So we stick with this formula again, one over x squared of x squared plus one, instead of x, you're gonna put tan x, okay? You're gonna put tan x and you're gonna square it plus one, okay? And then du, what is the derivative of tan? It's secant squared. So take a look at what happens. So you replace the x with tan x and because it's a function of x, rather than x itself, you need the derivative, so secant squared x. And now, I hope you remember that this was secant squared. Now, the final answer is absolute value. The reason why, because class, the square root Uh, the square root of secant squared x is not secant x. By definition, is an absolute value. Okay, that's the reason. 